Hello Electra Heads, Ailish here and today I'm going to be talking about the life and death of helmets. <laughs> now I know helmets not the most titillating of topics, however I thought I'd try and spice it up a little bit by also cycling around central London. I'm just now cycling towards Big Ben. I'm going to go visit the king. I am the king. What the f*** is this here? The helmet is arguably one of the most important pieces of equipment that you can have as a micromobility user. But believe it or not, helmets do have an expiry date. What the f And it's not as long as you may think. So as you can see here, it's made up of two parts. There's the outer shell and then there's the inner padding and liner materials. Modern helmets are constructed from plastics and more technologically advanced helmets that you might see on sort of racer helmets or motorbikes. They'll have things such as fiberglass reinforced with Kevlar or even carbon. But these all generally have fabric or foam interiors for both comfort and protection. Over time, this inner section begins to break down with different components degrading at different speeds. Whereas an outer crack might be fairly obvious and is definitely a sign to get your helmet changed, the inner lining, not so much. The foam is what soaks up the most impact. It is the primary bit of safety for your head. Whilst I'm cycling, my helmet gets exposed to things like wind, sun, UV rays, heat, cold, even hair products, oils and sun cream, which I use every day, can help or advance the degradation of the inner lining of my helmet. Now, of course, the more the helmet is used, the more likely it is to degrade quicker. And obviously when you're involved in an accident or you accidentally drop your helmet onto some kind of concrete or wood floor, the inner lining, known as EPS, absorbs that impact and can then become damaged. Wholesale sections of the inner lining can break free and that basically renders your helmet useless. And how you store your helmet as well when it's not in use is also a big impactor. Oh, we're just coming around the corner now to Buckingham Palace. the king in? Don't know. A surprise surprise, you shouldn't be storing your helmet in somewhere where there are extreme temperatures because hot and cold can actually cause the plastic to warp and reduce the foam's ability to absorb impact. Yo! Yo! So, what about storing your helmet in a shed or garage? Yeah, I know a lot of people do do this, so it's an important one to cover. And the thing here is places like sheds and garages, they're probably gonna be exposed to more extreme temperatures as the temperatures swing between day and night. Your shed or garage is probably gonna be experiencing that too unless you've done some mad insulation on these things. With that in mind, I'd say this probably isn't the best place to store your helmet. Best thing to do is to bring it inside. As you can see here, I actually keep mine tucked away on a little shelving unit next to where I like to keep my bike so I know exactly where it is and there's no harm of getting knocked or pulled off at any time. But the question is, how long is too long when it comes to helmet life? The general consensus from manufacturers is that you should be getting a replacement helmet between two to seven years. Bloody hell. That really shocked me. I don't know about you guys. Did that shock you? Let me know down in the comments. Not gonna lie, I used to have a helmet when I was like, a teen that I probably had for about 10 years, definitely stored it in the garage, definitely whipped it out, kind of ad hoc. Definitely probably shouldn't have done that, but you live and you learn, eh? We've all made mistakes. Is there an element of the manufacturers covering their ass and getting a few extra sales in? Probably, but to be honest, would you want to uh, push the time frame? and see if you can stretch that helmet any longer than what they recommend? I don't think I would. It's a matter of life or death here, people. However, let me throw a really interesting study your way by MEA Forensics, showing that helmets can withstand the test of time longer 
than what the manufacturers claim. Using 770 donated bicycle helmets, they found little or no evidence of helmet age-related deterioration in impact performance. This is quite a bold statement, right? Within the limitations of the sample and test conditions, these findings do not justify replacing a damage-free helmet every two to 10 years, as recommended by some helmet manufacturers. So look, I'll drop you a link to the article in the description below if you want to find out a little bit more and read the article yourself. But to give you a quick overview, said used helmets, some of which were about 26 years old, after drop tests of two impact speeds, one of which was three meters per second and the other was 6.2 meters per second, only four failed. Okay, back on the road. It is clear that helmets don't just start to shrivel up and die and go all soggy and mouldy like a pack of coriander that you've left a few days too long in the fridge. However, I would err uh, on the side of caution with all this information in mind and just get a new helmet if you think it's time. So actually the reason why I wanted to do this video was it came from a germ of an idea when I did my CBT test. So CBT, if you're not aware, is your, your compulsic CBT is your compulsive, compulsory <laughs> compulsory basic training that you have to do to be able to ride a moped with learner plates on British roads. I did pass. Thank you very much, everyone. Ooh! So here in the UK, it is the law to wear a motorcycle helmet when you're on anything from a moped and upwards. That is part of a very stringent British safety standards. Ooh, look at this. Can you guys see this? Beautiful. Look at that. Look. All helmets worn in the UK must meet one of the following. British standard BS6658198585 and carry the BSI kite mark. Unice, am I saying that right, regulation? 2205? must be a European economic member. You can even actually find specific approved helmets via a website called Sharp. They're a consumer information initiative, which basically helps you choose the right helmet and make sure you know everything you need that has been set up by the Department for Transport to give you all the information that you need to know on regulated helmets here for the UK. Now, motorcycle helmet regulation is obviously a little bit different than cycle helmets, and that is because it's actually not the law to wear a helmet when you are cycling, which I think is a little bit de-lally, but hey-ho. Tell me if you think otherwise and let me know why. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You're wrong. It does make you wonder why if helmets do technically expire, why they don't actually have an expiry date because well, it's not really that simple. The reason is down to a lot of factors, basically. Firstly, the clock doesn't start ticking once the helmet rolls off the production line. This helmet could then be put into some cool dark storage in the back of a bike shop for a good few years before somebody comes along and purchases one. You won't get a better deal than that. You can't just chuck on an expiration date onto a helmet because the manufacturer doesn't know when it's gonna be bought. So at the end of the day, it all really comes down to you being fully aware in terms of how you've been using your helmet, the kind of conditions you've been putting it through, how often you've been knocking it about, how often you've been in a maybe small collision or fall. And obviously if you have been in a crash, please do change your helmet immediately if you haven't already. Because of course, the better you look after your helmet, the longer it's gonna last. But if you're one of those who aren't convinced about wearing a helmet, let me just for a moment spout off some facts and studies that might make you think otherwise. Go on. According to a 2019 study looking at helmet use on severe traumatic brain injury and death involving 11,000 cyclists, unsurprisingly, cycle helmet use was associated with a significant reduction in severe traumatic brain injury. 47.6% of patients not wearing a helmet sustained a severe TBI, compared to 19.1% who were wearing a helmet. The largest review on cycling and helmets to date collected data from over 64,000 cyclists 
cyclists around the world and found compelling evidence to suggest that wearing a helmet reduces the risk of serious head injury by almost 70% and fatal head injury by 65%. They also found that the risk of sustaining a general head injury is reduced by 51% and a facial injury by 33% when wearing a helmet. So keep that beautiful face and head of yours safe. So look, if you've realized that maybe it's time to get a helmet or if you've got a helmet, if it's time for an upgrade, what exactly should you be looking out for? Well, let me tell you. First off, you want to make sure that you're buying one that you are happy to wear because if you're like me and you're commuting daily, you want to make sure that you're happy to pop it on your head, that you're going to be comfortable in it and just making sure that it fits you properly. All you need to do is really simple, get a tape measure, pop it around your head, measure the circumference and you are golden in terms of finding a size of helmet that you need. And you can also get a fastener. I've got one on the back of my helmet. Lots of helmets do that so that once you pop it on, you can then get that fastener and tighten it up so it's nice and secure. If you want to go even more super savvy and secure, then you can look out for helmets that offer MIPS. Sorry? That is a thin little bit of plastic that is inside your helmet. So if you are in a collision and there is any twisting or rotations, then that little plastic rotates for you and stops you from getting any potentially added brain injuries or even worse, damage. But whatever model you buy, you wanna make sure you're looking out for BS EN1078 marking. And that is represented by, as I mentioned earlier, the CE symbol. What that symbol means is it meets British and European safety standards. Very, very important, so keep an eye out for that. And also don't think that you have to be spending a load of money on a helmet as well. If it has that CE marking, then it's gonna be giving you the right amount of protection you need. So don't think that spending 400 quid or 200 quid on a helmet is gonna make it an all round better helmet. A 50 quid helmet, I'm sure, with the CE marking can do just as great a job. Speaking of helmets, we have just collaborated with Lumos Helmets because we absolutely love what the brand has to offer. They have this integrated LED feature, which means that you are going to be seen when you are on the road. So that is an added safety feature. If you'd like to pick one of these up, then make sure to head on over to electroheads.com to buy your very own. Now, obviously, a part of this is if you need to be disposing of your helmet and getting a new one, how's the best way to dispose of it? Annoyingly, a lot of helmets are made up of plastics and 99% of plastic is essentially ending up in landfill and or in our oceans. So how can we stop that? Well, most helmets are made of polystyrene foam or polycarbonate, which is technically recyclable. So what I would recommend you do is contact your local recycling center and see if they can take them in for you. There are also some awesome brands out there who are making uh, more eco-friendly helmets there's one brand called studio mom studio m-o-m -M. they're a dutch brand and they're actually making uh, a helmet currently that's made out of mushroom fiber mycelium it's all very smart stuff i can't wait to see what they do but anyway i'm cycling back towards buckingham palace right now and i'm actually going to end it there because i think i think i've spoken enough well guys i'm going to wrap it up there thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned a few little bits of nuggets of information now, i want you to fess up how long have you had your helmet for let me know down in the comments is it time to get a replacement let me know and just i'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well are you someone that doesn't actually wear a helmet has this maybe helped you to think that perhaps it's time get commenting down below and don't forget forget that this is just essentially a bit of plastic so make sure that you have your wits about you when you're on the roads that is the best protection all right guys thanks so much for watching i'll catch you later and let me know if there's anything else you would like me to discuss because i'm always here to bring you some topics worth talking about okay see you later bye oh, the king save me